don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance, and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them. Some of y'all, get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please. Don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Word of the Lord. Glad you're with us and hope that you enjoyed that program right before. Maybe uh, those guys got some people thinking, and maybe this will be something that you will also think about. I believe it's something that you have been taught. I believe it's something you believe, what we're going to be discussing tonight, and I hope also that you will consider it carefully because it does have to do with your salvation tonight. Before we get started, I want to give you our contact information where you can reach us. We're meeting at 250 Boulevard in Eden. 276-340-2653 uh, is my cell number. 336-394-5721 is uh, an office number where you can reach me or you can write me at awordfromthelord at gmail.com. For those of you who are watching on the online, welcome to the program and hope that you are, are enjoying this and telling your friends. Just talk to a a uh, member of the Lord's Church this afternoon from uh, down in Texas, and, and he made sure he had it uh, had the uh, website right. More people are watching uh, every day or every week as we go by, uh, go by and so we uh, hope that you will continue to pass on the, uh, the word about where to find us online. But if you are in, in town, close by, and you want to come meet with us, this is how you can, can reach us. Uh, also, if you are in the... Martinsville, Danville, Reedsville area. Here are the ways where you can uh, assemble with the saints or meet brethren who are, are uh, meeting in your area, and we hope that you will take advantage of that very thing as well. Tonight, friends, I want to ask you if you, if you know this man. This man is a very popular uh, teacher. I see him on, on television uh, fairly often, and I've run into some individuals who uh, follow his teaching. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we like about door knocking is we get to find out kind of the pulse of individuals. You may see us in your area knocking on doors or, <clears throat> or uh, passing out flyers, inviting you to our worship services, our tent meetings. Tent meetings uh, officially start in June, June 22nd through July 3rd. And we'll, be, and we'll be knocking on your door and passing out flyers, those of you in the Danville area. And if you know this man, you've seen this man, you may feel the same way that some of the individuals that we... Uh, talk to Phil about him. This man's name is Les Feldick, and he is, uh, according to one individual that we spoke to, he is my hero. That's what the man said. And I could tell that he 
uh, listens to Mr. Feldeck because just the way he's, the way he's talking, some of the things he was saying. You know, it's very interesting to notice that you can tell about people, where they are, what they believe, based upon what they say, how they talk. You'll never hear a member of the Church of Christ saying, we got saved. If you ever hear someone uh, from the Church of Christ saying, we got saved, it's just because they haven't been uh, taught uh, correctly that got saved is not the way you talk. The, the Bible says you obey the gospel. Or you'll never hear someone say, my pastor. That's not in the Church of Christ. That's not the kind of language we use because we speak where the Bible speaks. We call Bible things by Bible names and do Bible things in Bible ways. And so uh, I knew immediately that I was talking to a Les Feldick disciple when this man said what he said. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. One reason why I'm talking about Les Feldick, you might be saying, and is because I know that probably there's more than just this one man that I talked to who considers this man to be his hero. And this, this evening, what I want to do, friends, is, is help you to realize that, you know, uh, uh, sometimes we say less is more. Well, in this, in this case, less is, is uh, even less. You, want, you know, you don't want any more of less than you can stand because this man will lead you astray, and that's what we're going to talk tonight. Now, someone might say, well, why less fell dick? Uh, I've heard individuals on various and, uh, and a sundry um, uh, web pages say, well, you know, they must have run out of local preachers to pick on because they're picking on this guy out of Oklahoma, and that's where uh, Les Feldick is from. Well, no, we didn't run out of local preachers. Uh, it may just be that we know something about local preachers that you will fail to admit. Number one, local preachers generally don't uh, want to be scrutinized or give you information that, that you can scrutinize. But the reason why we're talking about Les Feldick is not because we run our local preachers, but because local preachers and, and people uh, actually believe what he teaches. Maybe they, maybe they follow him and maybe they regurgitate what they hear from him as preachers. But in any case, they actually espouse the same thing that he, he teaches. And so why not use him and demonstrate that this is what you're all doing that's wrong? And help you to see that this may be some error that you need to, to change, you need to confront, you need to scrutinize, analyze, and really consider in light of God's word if it's true or not. That's why we're talking about Les Feldick. That's why we're going to talk about something he teaches tonight. One of the things that, that uh, I want to show you, just to give you some demonstration about how people are saying the same things he says, is just by letting you hear them. Listen to what some of these individuals say. The first the person I want you to listen to is Dr. Jerry Carter right over here at Reachable Baptist Church. And this is what this is what he says that's right in line with what Mr. Les Feldick says. When Peter, when, when Peter made that statement and then they said, what shall we do? Because we want to call on the name of the Lord to be saved. Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you for the remission of sins. Now that's, that's taking that's, Romans back to Acts. No, so. that's, Act, no that's Acts 2.21, call on the name of the Lord. Acts 2.21, call the name of the Lord. Right. And then verse 38 is the answer. What right. shall we do? Just like I said a minute ago, who's he talking to there? He's talking to the Israeli people. He's not talking to the he's not talking to the Gentiles there. He's not talking to the Gentiles there. He's not talking to the Gentiles there. Now, did you hear what he's saying? Acts 2, according to Dr. Carter, is talking to Jews, not to Gentiles. Not to Gentiles. Now, here's a caller. That espouses uh, Les Feldick's doctrine. And I know that's the case because she actually said, she doesn't say in this clip, but she did tell us that she follows Les Feldick. And she actually gave us a book that we uh, looked at and perused through. Uh, but we had to give it back to her because I think she was uh, trying to get indoctrinated a little more with his doctrine. So we did look through the book and give it back to her. And this lady's from up in Bassett. And here's what she says. Paul said the mystery was revealed to him for the Gentiles, ma'am. Peter preached That's to the right. Jews. That's right. We're, we're, we're Gentiles. Well, and, you know, he preached to the Jews. I'll tell you, so do you, do you only follow Paul's doctrine? What, Paul? I'm a Paul, yes. I'm a Pauline do, uh, believer. Okay. All right. All we right. got you so, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That's right. All right. So she's a Pauline believer. I'm Pauline is what she said. And that's exactly the same thing that the man that I talked to Sunday said. I'm Pauline. Well, I started calling him Pauline. Uh, you know, is, is what you're going to be? I'm Pauline. I follow Paul. We are writing to the Gent we are Gentiles. Therefore, we should listen to Paul's doctrine. That's what they're saying. 
Jerry Carter, Acts 2.38 doesn't count to us because that's, that's to the Jews, not the Gentiles. So this is what Les Feldick says. See, this is what he's teaching. This is from Les Feldick's website. This is how he teaches. You just see if I'm misrepresenting him. But he actually says there are two different Gospels. One Gospel is for the Gentiles, one Gospel for the Jews. Paul goes on to say, this is Les Feldick, then Paul goes on to say this whole mystery of the gospel was revealed to him and that why I'm always stressing Paul's apostleship and spending most of our time in his letters. Well, you know, friends, you stop and think about it. The apostle Paul wrote over half the New Testament, so it makes sense that you probably spend more time in his letters than anybody else's. But it's not because, it's not because he was an apostle to the Gentiles as much as it was because he, he was a, an inspired writer. But notice this. This is what they say about Peter. Peter's gospel, called the gospel of the kingdom, or the gospel of the circumcision, was preached to the nation of Israel under the law of Moses. Paul's gospel, you see the distinction, was called the gospel of grace, or the gospel <clears throat> of the uncircumcision, was preached to the Gentiles under grace. Whether we are Jew or Gentile, this is what I understand, whether we are Jew or Gentile, Paul's gospel is the way of salvation for us in this present age of grace. <clears throat> Why well, make a big difference, a big deal about Peter and Paul being different gospel if you're going to then turn around and say the Jews are to obey Paul's gospel too? Why well, say Peter preached one gospel that was just to the Jews and Paul preached another gospel that was just to the Gentiles and then turn around and say, but whether we're Jew or Gentile, we should obey Paul. How about Jew or Gentile, you should obey the gospel that both Peter and Paul preached. Tonight, what I'm going to show you is this idea of two different gospels. Peter's gospel and Paul's gospel is so far into the scriptures. Friends, it is, it is, so far, it is as far as the east is from the west when it comes to truth. It, it is so false that I don't know what, what would be more false. The devil, you know, the devil wants you to believe. The devil wants you to believe that, that the gospel can't save you, but if you can't do that, you know what he does? He turns around and says, well, how about this? How about there's two gospels that save you? You know, or how about there's two different gospels? Now, let's look at more of what Mr. Feldick says. And just to show you that this is more uh, doctrine that is consistent, not only with what Mr. Feldick teaches, but also what other people are saying, uh, is this statement. Now, I apologize for it being a little small, but it's about the book of Acts in general. He says, Acts is a transitional book. So always be aware that what was good for the Jews under the Jewish economy seems like a contradiction, but it's not. It's only God changing the program. The moment we believe for our salvation, the gospel of grace, that Jesus died for our sins, was buried and rose from the dead, the Holy Spirit baptizes us and we are saved. Don't put the message that Peter preached and the message that Paul preached in a blender and mix it all up and expect to understand it. Well, I say you can. I say you can put them in a the blender, mix it up, and you still understand it because it's all the same gospel. But he wants to make a distinction. He says that'll give you heartburn. You'll, mix it, you'll miss it up. If you mix up the book of Acts, you'll get messed up. Well... This is what Les Feldick teaches. And I'm not saying these guys get their, get their doctrine from him, but I'm saying they share the same doctrine. And this man is someone who will actually get on TV and preach it. And all these other Baptist preachers out here will, will hide behind the pulpit and behind the walls and lock the doors and not let you know it. See? But I'm telling you, you know what you hear, friends. You know what you hear. Now, here's another example. Here's an example of a Baptist preacher espousing the same doctrine. This is from an article that appeared in the Martinsville Bulletin some years back, 2001, I think to be exact. This is what he says. This is Dr. Dr. Reverend, excuse me, Reverend, Reverend Gary Hughes. He says the book of Acts is a traditional book. I think this would be a transitional book, like, like uh, 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 Feldeck says. If you take your church doctrine out of the book of Acts, you will be confused. That's exactly what Feldeck says. Let me show you what I mean. In Acts, there are at least three different ways people received the Holy Spirit and sins were forgiven. No, there's not. There's only one way in the book of Acts that people had their sins forgiven. See? But he says, well, you're going to get it all mixed up. If you put it in a blender and mix it all up, you get confused. So 
I hope you see, this is why we're going to talk about Les Fell Dick or anybody else who espouses this doctrine, that the book of Acts has two gospels in it, or more than one gospel, about how to be saved. Now, friends, if you, if you hear someone saying that, there's one reason why they want you to believe that. There's one reason why they want you to believe that the book of Acts, that the book of Acts is jumbled, or if you, if you mix Peter and Paul together, you'll be confused. There's only one reason, and that's because they want to get around what the Lord said to do to be saved. They're trying to get around doing something for their salvation, just like Micah and Mark were, were talking earlier. They're trying to get around it. They're trying to, to get salvation by doing nothing, and that's exactly what Mr. Feldick teaches, faith plus nothing, and that's what all these other Baptist preachers state. Now, so let's just look at, let's look at his doctrine. Let's look at this doctrine of two Gospels, and let's just see if it's true or not. Let's just see if there are two different Gospels, or is there simply one? One that's for the Jew and Gentile alike. All right? So let's just see what the word, a word from the Lord is on it. Notice this, friends. If there are two different Gospels, why did Peter and Paul both go to the Jews and the Gentiles? Wouldn't it be simpler? Wouldn't it be more simple? To say, Peter, you go to the Jews and don't ever mess with the Gentiles. And Paul, I'm, I'm sending you to the Gentiles and don't you ever mess with the Jews. You know, you just learn one gospel and Peter, you want learn one gospel and y'all, you know, if you ever have trouble, if you ever run into some Jews, you call the other one. You know, Paul, if you run into some Jews, you call Peter. Peter, if you run into some Gentiles, you call Paul. And I'm going to send you to some individuals who... Who, who, uh, 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 who you only have to learn one gospel from. But notice this, both went to the Jews and Gentiles. In Acts 15, verse 7, And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So the Gentiles heard from the mouth of Peter. Now we're going to get we're going to make another point about this verse in just a moment, but I want you to right now just to consider the fact that Peter, the Jew preacher, the Jew apostle, the apostle of the circumcision is the one who first went to the Gentiles. He first went to the Gentiles. And notice about Paul. Paul says in Acts 9:15 or excuse me, Christ says about Paul in Acts 9:15 the Lord said to him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now, why is it that God or Christ would send Jesus, or why would Christ send Paul to preach a gospel to the Jews that was different from the one that he was going to preach to the Gentiles? See? Why would he do this? Why would he do this? Paul always went to the Jews first. Acts 13, verse 46 to 48. Then Paul said, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing you put it from yourselves and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Now, why would, why would it make a big difference for the Jews if Paul said, well, now I'm going to go over here and start teaching a different gospel to the Gentiles since you rejected the gospel that was for you? You see? It, 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 it wasn't provoke jealousy. It wouldn't provoke jealousy in the Jews for Paul to say, well, I'm going to take what was supposed to be for you and give it to somebody else. If if it was two different things. You see, when you take something that is supposed to be for one person and give to the other, it provokes a little jealousy. It stirs them up a little bit. But if I, if I tell you, well, I was going to give you this, but I'm not because you rejected it. So now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to give a gift that's just for this person. I'm going to give that gift to them. 
You know, that doesn't provoke any jealousy. I have two children. I have two children. If I give, if I give the older one or offer something to the older one and they don't want it, and I say, well, I'll just give it to the younger one. You know what happens? The older one wants it. And vice versa. If I say to the younger one, do you want this? And they say, no, I'm going to give it to your sister. Oh, wait a minute, I want it. Now, that's exactly what God intended. God intended to provoke uh, the Jews to jealousy by giving, uh, by giving the, the Gentiles what should have been to the, uh, what should have been to the uh, Jews. In Romans chapter 10 and uh, verse, let's see, verse, uh, I want to say 11, that's not it though. I'll provoke them with jealousy. It's, uh, yeah, verse 19. Romans 10, 19. I'm sorry. Romans 10, verse 19. Let me get this up where we can read it. Look at this. But I, but I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. Israel was the people. But the Gentiles weren't the people. And by a foolish nation I will anger you. How? How did God do that? How were they going to be provoked? By taking the gospel that should, that should have been to them first, and when they reject it, give it to somebody else. And that's going to provoke them to jealousy. You see? And so that's why Paul is preaching the same gospel to the Jews that he's preaching to the Gentiles. And when he turns to the Gentiles, the Jews, the Jews get upset. It provokes them to jealousy. Notice this. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord and as many as ordained to eternal life and believe. Now, listen. When the Gentiles heard this, why would they be glad? Because they are getting something that was supposed to be to the Jews first. Peter and Paul both went to the Gentiles and both went to the Jews. And here's why. Because they are preaching the same gospel they're preaching the same gospel, friends. Now, Les Feldeck and these ba other Baptist preachers here won't tell you that. You know why? Because they don't want you to obey the gospel that Peter preached. They want to convince you that Paul is preaching some other gospel over here that will tell you you don't have to be baptized to be saved. And so they say, well, we'll just have two gospels here. We'll just make up two gospels. We'll make up another one. We'll say there's two, and you don't have to obey the first one. Listen, they both went to the Jews, they both went to the Gentiles, and one gospel was what they preached. Listen to what Paul says in Romans 1, verse 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel, my friends, of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, friends, if there's more than one gospel, Paul sure didn't know about it. He, if, he, if he was preaching a different gospel to the Jews than he was to the Gentiles, he sure didn't know it because look what he says. He says, the gospel, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, singular, for they are the power of God. No. He didn't say, I'm not ashamed of the gospels. One. He said gospel. For it, not they, are the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. One to the Jew and the other to the Gentile, unto uh, the Greek. No. He didn't make a distinction. He said Jew and Gentile both get the gospel. Jew and Gentile both get the gospel. Now, friends, you just can't get around that. The only reason you'd want to get around that is if you are trying to get around obeying something that's in this gospel. And if somebody's not telling you the truth or making that clear to you, it's because they're trying to trick you. They're deceiving you. Listen, God is a very efficient God. Friends, God's an efficient God. He is not going to send two different gospels to two different peoples when one gospel will do it. Now, you, do, you, do we need to go back to Acts chapter 15? Verse 7, let's look again. 
when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of one gospel, to hear the word of the Jewish gospel, no, or to hear the word of the Gentile gospel. No, he just says the gospel. Now, if he's talking to Jews and he says the gospel, wouldn't the Jews go, wait a minute, Peter, you're preaching to them the same gospel you preach to us? Don't you mean that to their own gospel, God made choice among us that the Gentiles should hear their own gospel by your mouth? No. See? They understood when Peter said the gospel, they understood that this was one gospel, the same gospel they heard. How do I know? Look. He says, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Same gospel produces the same thing, faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. And friends, any way you slice and dice it, it comes up with one gospel for the Jew and Gentile. Not at one gospel for the Jew and one gospel for the Gentile. One gospel for them both. See? Now, you, just, you, you, have, you have to really be trying. You have to really be trying to get around something in order to make there be two different, two different gospels. Look, in verse 10, and Acts 15, 10. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. How many words of grace are there? You ever thought about that? If they're saved by the gospel... If the gospel produces faith and they're saved by that gospel, it's the power of God to salvation, Romans 1, 16, and they're saved by the grace of the Lord, you know what? There's only one word of grace. Acts 20, verse 32. Acts 20, verse 32. Paul said, I commend you to the word of his grace. This was, well, he's only talking to Gentiles there. Well, if it's, if it's the word of God's grace, if it's, if it's the word of grace from the same source, wouldn't the word of grace from God be sufficient for anybody? Listen, friends, Peter and Paul, they didn't know any difference between the God. They didn't know about two different gospels. <clears throat> That's a figment of some Baptist preacher's imagination. Because he's trying to get you to think that you don't have to do something that God said do. He's trying to convince you that you don't need to do something that God says do. Look, Peter and Paul went to the same place. They talked to the same people. And they talked the same gospel. Now, watch the consequences of this. Look at the consequences of this, friends. It, 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 it's, it's damning. It is condemning individuals, not only who are believing it, but you actually condemn an apostle with that doctrine. You actually make Paul condemn Peter with that particular doctrine of two different gospels. Watch this. Watch this. In Galatians 1, 1 and 2. Paul, who's talking? Paul, an apostle. Not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Unto the churches of Galatia. Right into the churches of Galatia. Here's what he says to them. Skip on down about verse 6 or verse 9. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you. Then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that we have received, let him be accursed. 
So if someone comes and teaches another gospel and the gospel of the Jews would be a different gospel, supposedly, than the gospel that Paul was preaching to these, church, to these folks in Galatia, that person is going to be accursed. True? You can nod your head. That's right. That's right. Someone comes with another gospel into Galatia and preaches something different than what Paul is preaching, he's going to be accursed. Let an anathema of heaven rest upon him. There, there, that's what it is. All right? Now, watch this. I'm reading along, and I hear Peter. I read Peter. Now, Peter supposedly got a different gospel, right? Watch this. 1 Peter 1, verse 1. Peter... An apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, wait a minute. Peter is writing to the folks in Galatia? Now, Paul has already said if somebody brings another gospel in, in here, let him be accursed. And here's Peter writing to these folks in Galatia. And you know Peter's got a different gospel? Peter, you're going to be cursed. And is Peter's gospel different than the gospel that Paul preached? According to our friends who look to Les Feldick as their hero or who espouse the same thing, they say he has to be. You know why? Because look what Peter preaches. Peter preaches the life figure wherein even baptism doth also now save us. See, Peter preaches baptism for remission of sins. That's Jews. That's a Jew, that's a Jew gospel. But you know what? He's telling to the folks in Galatia. Oh, oh. He's telling to the folks in Galatia. And by the way, by the way, do you know where, do you know who carried the gospel to these folks? The Apostle Paul. Now, some of them, some of them were in Acts 2. There are some folks from these places in Acts 2. Jews. But if you read about Acts 14, you know what you find? You find Paul going through Iconia, Lyconia, Phrygia, Pamphylia. These are all places up here in Galatia. These are all places up here in Asia Minor. Paul's the one tried to go to Bithynia. See, Paul's all up in his area. But here's Peter writing to the people that Paul also wrote to and that Paul also taught. And he's telling them, you know, he's reminding them about baptism. Doth also now save us. Peter, you're cursed. If Les Feld, Dick, and Jerry Carter, you know, Mr. Hughes, if they're, if they're all right, if they are correct, then Peter's a curse. Peter's a curse. Now, see, you see the consequences of these two, of these two uh, uh, go, uh, doctrines? Listen, if Peter preached a different gospel than Paul, then Paul said Peter was accursed. And if Peter preached the same gospel as Paul, then why would you fight and kick and moan about repent and be baptized for the remission of sins? Why would you say, well, that don't apply to the Gentiles? If it's the same gospel, you have to do it. If it's a different gospel, Peter's accursed. Now, which one are you going to choose, friend? Which one are you going to choose? Are you going to hold to the Baptist doctrine, you know, the teaching of Les Feldick and some of these other guys and say, well, Peter had to be accursed because there ain't no way. Ain't no way I'm going to be baptized. I'll tell you why. That's why you hold to it because you, you fight against it, friend. And when you fight against it, you're making Peter cursed. You're making Peter a curse. You're putting an anathema from heaven on him. All right, we, we can have the phone lines. Go ahead. <clears throat> now, are you ready for the consequences of, of this? Are you ready for the consequences of this, of this teaching? Because that's where we are. That's where we are. Now, listen. Someone says, well, Paul always preached the, the, uh, the gospel. What is the gospel? Now, this is one of the things that, this is one of the things that uh, that the fellow that I talked to for I don't know, we probably talked a good 15, 20 minutes. No, longer than that. It's probably, it probably was 20 minutes. This is what he said. He always brought up the gospel. Paul preached the gospel, First Corinthians 15. 
Well, we can answer that. We can answer that. You want a word from the Lord? You want a word from the Lord? Welcome to the program. Hello? All right. Sorry, call back. All right, so Paul, pre Paul preached the gospel. Let's just, let's just put it up here where people can look at it. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Maybe we should put it up here where it's just uh, nice and clear without any uh, emphasis being placed upon it. All right, we'll try this again. You're on the word from the Lord. Welcome to the program. You're on the word from the Lord. Welcome to the program. You're on the air. Okay. Uh, if you if you want to call in, uh, at least talk. If you're not going to talk, then please don't call. All right. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Here's what Paul says. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye also have, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, Unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered first, I delivered unto you first, of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren uh, at once, of whom the greater part remain uh, unto this present, but some are falling asleep. And after that, he was seen of James, and then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. For I am not the least of the apostles, uh, that I'm not me to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, verse 10, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than all than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. Now, there's a lot of interesting points to be made in this particular passage. We're going to try line four one more time. Why are we why is line four doing that? Uh unless it's just someone. Brandon, can you get line four next time it comes through? Uh, now, a lot of good points we made here in, in 1 Corinthians 15. Let's make a few of them. First of all, notice this. Paul says, let's talk about the gospel. The gospel which I declared unto you. What does it do? It saves, okay? Paul says, by which you are saved, uh, by which also you are saved. So Paul declared the gospel to the Corinthians, and that's what saved them. And then he says, here's the points. Here's the points of the gospel. Christ died for our sin. There's his death. Whoops, there's his death, sorry. There's his death. He was buried. There's his burial. And he rose again the third day according to Scripture. The death, burial, and resurrection. Now, according to all of our two gospel friends, that is the gospel. That's the gospel. I don't doubt that at all, friends. I don't question that one bit. And it doesn't affect me to say that is the gospel and still say Peter preached the same gospel. Because Peter preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ on the day of Pentecost. Have you not read? He said you killed him. There's his death. He talked about his burial. He said David, David is still in the, in the, in the sepulcher. His sepulchre is with us to this day. But Jesus was buried and rose again and is sitting on the right hand of God. There's a death, burial, and resurrection. Peter preached a death, burial, and resurrection on the day of Pentecost. Why do you think he's preaching something different than what Paul preached? See, he's preaching the death, burial, and resurrection. Just like Peter did. Just like Peter did. Now, let me show you, friends, how the death, burial, and resurrection is preached. Let me show you from Paul, from Paul's writing, how a person might 
might obey the gospel and be saved. How can they obey the death, burial, and resurrection? Well, let's just look at what Paul says. Let's look at Paul's gospel. Because all of you out there are saying, well, Paul didn't preach baptism for sin. He preached grace. Well, let's just see. Let's just see. Romans 6, beginning in verse 1, he says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You're dead to sin, Romans? What did you do? Pray tell, what did you do so that you're no longer living in sin? He said, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Well, there's the death of Christ. And what puts us in his death? Baptism. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. There's death and there's a burial. What do you want to bet there's a resurrection coming? What do you want to bet there's a resurrection coming? Look at this. That like as Christ was dead, was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. You see, Paul said the death, burial, and resurrection in, in 1 Corinthians 15. And when he's writing to Romans, the Romans, that beloved book for all of you faith-only folks, you know, look what he says. He says, here's the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You're dead with Christ in baptism. You're buried with Christ in baptism. And you're raised with Christ from baptism. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we sh shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Death, burial, and resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Death, burial, and resurrection. Romans 6, 1 through 6. You see how it corresponds? You say, well, baptism ain't got nothing to do with it. Paul says baptism has everything to do with it. Baptism has everything to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And if you want to say that you're saved before you die with Christ, before you're buried with Christ, and before you're raised with Christ, then you definitely have another gospel. And it's not anything like Peter's, and it's certainly not anything like Paul. You've got salvation before you die, before you're buried, before you're raised. And Paul says that's, that's where we come up out of newness of life. You see? You see how simple it is? It's the same gospel. Peter preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And the way to be saved is repent and be baptized. Paul comes along, preaches the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And he preaches to the Gentiles, you've got to believe in Jesus. The Jews believed. They knew the Messiah was coming. Now after they killed him, because they didn't believe that, that he was the Christ, after they killed him, they still had to believe. But man, they had belief once, once Peter said, you killed the son of glory. So they believed, they repented, and they were baptized. Paul preached the same thing, same gospel. Same gospel. Look, friends, Peter, Peter and, and Paul, they preached the exact same gospel to Jew and Gentile alike and got the same exact results. People obeyed. They repented. They were baptized. And they were saved. Now, you might say, well, James, you left out, you left out uh, uh, hearing and, and uh, uh, confessing. Well, just because I didn't say it don't mean I left it out. Peter didn't say confess in Acts 2. But we know they had to confess. The eunuch had to confess. He was a Jew. He was a Jew, and, and here he was. He had to confess, Acts chapter 8. See, just because... Something is not in an account doesn't mean that it's left out or that you don't have to do it. Somebody's going to call up and quote Acts, uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 and say, well, see, there's no baptism in there. And you know what? There's no, there's no repentance in there either. Now, are you going to tell me that there's two different gospels here? Are you going to tell me that there's two different gospels that are, that are uh, uh, being taught by Peter? And by Paul, listen, here's what Paul says again. Now, here, here's this, here's this uh, Gentile preacher, this Gentile apostle, and look what he says. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, 
buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And ye being dead in your sins and, your uncircum and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you, have for, having given you uh, all trespasses. Death, burial, and resurrection. And it's all around baptism. It's all around baptism, just like Peter. Just like Peter said. Now, I want you to, I want you to go back for a minute, friends, and think again about what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. If you're still not convinced that Peter and Paul preached the same gospel, look what, Peter, what Paul says. The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Then he says in verse 5, And that he was seen of Cephas, there's Peter, and then of the twelve, after that he was seen above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present. But some are falling asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, and am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecute the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me, not in vain, lest I have labored more abundantly than all. Uh, verse 11. Therefore, whether it were I, Paul, or they, who? Peter and all the others, all right? He says, so we preach and so ye believe. Paul, Paul preached. Pa Paul preached. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Paul preached and said, it doesn't matter if Peter or me preach, Peter or I preach, uh, we both preach the same thing and you believe. James. You're on, you're on the air. Yes, sir, James. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. This is Jay Bird from the Eden area. Uh, hey, Jay Bird. I noticed you have a little ministry up on the boulevard up there. I passed by there the other day. Word from the Lord up there. What nights do you have preaching there so I can come there, sir? Thursday nights at 7. Huh? Thursday night at 7. Yeah, and then after you have a Thursday night at 7, you go there and do your broadcast at the station. And, and I come down here. And then Sunday... Sundays at 10 and 11. Okay. Sunday at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Where is that going to be at? On Boulevard, too? Yeah. Happened to the one at the Holiday Inn Express. Brand, Brandon Horton is still meeting down there. Huh? Bra Brandon Horton is meeting down there. I don't know Brandon Horton. I don't know who he is. Right. He's been on TV a I couple times. Is that the guy that was on there with you tonight? No. No one's been on here with me tonight. Micah, there was some guy on there a while ago before you got on there. Yeah, that was Micah and Mark. Where's Micah and Mark at tonight? Th they're in Danville. They were on before me. They was on before you. Then they then went back to Danville, so now it's your show. Who's coming on after you? Nobody. Okay, well, what happened to the other guy, well, Johnny Robertson? Well, his time changed from 10 o'clock to 8 o'clock. He's coming on an hour ahead of, ahead of uh, me now. Oh, well. And Micah and Mark were doing his program for him. I know Micah. Is, I know one Micah lives in Eden. Do I know him? Is that no, no, it's not the same Micah. Okay, I must be a different Micah. But uh, your meeting's on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock and on Monday, I mean on Sundays at 10 o'clock. That's correct. Sunday school 11. What if I don't have to ride up there? Tomorrow? I could walk up the boulevard, but if I want to ride, you can come and get provide transportation. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure in the Bible... Doing to others as you would have them doing to you. Would you say that quote that scripture out to me again before we hang up, uh, Brother James? Do, uh, quote that, where that scripture is found? Yes, sir. Doing uh, Matthew 7 yes, sir. and verse 12. Okay. I believe that's right. Let me make sure I'm, I'm getting it right. I, we want to check. See, I, I even want to check myself here. All right, Matthew seven twelve. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would men that these should do to you, do you even so to them. So uh, there you go, J Bird. All right, now, <clears throat> friends, let's let's get back in and back to this point we were making in First Corinthians fifteen. 
Now, you hear what Paul says here in verse 11? He says, therefore, whether it were I, whether it was I, here, I got it, I got it. You're on the word from the Lord. Okay, that's getting old. Uh, first, first Corinthians uh, 15 and verse 11, therefore, whether it were I, Paul, or they, these, these, these folks that are over here talking to the Jews only, he says, so we preach. And so ye believe. Now look, we, the folks going to the Jews and the folks going to the Gentiles, are preaching and the Corinthians are believing. Now how are they going to believe two different Gospels? How are they believing two different Gospels? It must be they're preaching the same thing. Now friends, that's just, you just can't get over that. You just, you just have to want to misguide or uh, twist the Scriptures and want to try to get around something that the Bible's teaching in order to believe a gospel, a, a doctrine like this that says there's two different gospels. That's just all there is to it. And I can assure you on the day of, on the day of uh, judgment, you go over and stand by Paul and say you're Pauline, and he's going to say, I'm standing right here by Peter. Peter and Paul are going to be standing together on the day of judgment and say we preach the same thing. And you're over saying, well, I'm going to stand beside Paul. I'm Pauline. I'm Pauline. You remember the lady saying that? Well, let me tell you something, friends. Paul has already addressed that subject. Paul has already addressed that subject in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse uh, about 12. He says, Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Now, all of you folks out there saying I'm Pauline, neighbor, that's, that's, that's uh, got Les Feldick as your hero, and ma'am up in Bassett, and all of you folks that are teaching the same thing, listen, if you're saying you're Pauline, you're following Paul, here's what Paul says to you. He says, is Christ divided? Uh, he said, I, you don't, don't say you're following me. You're, you're on the word from Lord. Yes, um, I'd like to know where did the original question was derived from uh, that you was trying to explain. Do what now? Okay, you were explaining that Paul and Peter is not different. Right. I know they're not different at all. Okay. So who said they was different? Well, I, I, I started out by saying I met a man as we were door knocking that was follow that followed the teachings of let me see here one two three four that followed the teaching of this man oh okay and 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 uh, actually one of them said he's my hero and that's why and I told him I, when we got through the discussion I said well I'm gonna do something on Les Feldick on TV yeah, that's right and you know what he said he said, oh, so that when you don't get your way, you just talk about them on TV. <laughs> and, and so, I said, no, it ain't my way. I'm trying to help you out, man. I'm trying to help you out by seeing that this man's leading you astray. Yeah. And so that's, that's, where, that's where we started tonight. Oh, okay, you have, you're doing a great job in explaining oh, it. All right. I, and I was just wondering where they, someone had got it confused. Right. Uh, yeah, there, and there's a lot of people that got it confused. Did you hear... Did you hear um, did you hear me play this clip from the, the Baptist preacher here in Reedsville? Oh, no, I, no, sir, I didn't. Can All you right. replay it? I'll play it again for you. Now, listen, he's going to say the exact same thing that, that we've been talking about, that this, this one gospel is just for the Jews and not the Gentiles. All right, here, here he comes, right here. When Peter, when, when Peter made that statement, and then they said, what shall we do? Because we want to call on the name of the Lord to be saved. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. No, that's, that's, that's taking that's, Romans back to Acts. No, or? that's Act. No, that's Acts two twenty one. Call the name of the Lord. Acts two twenty one. Call the name of the Lord. Right. And then verse thirty eight is the answer. What right. shall we do? Just like I said a minute ago, who's he talking to there? He's talking to the Israeli people. He's not talking to the. He's not talking to the Gentiles there. He's not talking to the Gentiles there. He's not talking to the Gentiles there. Okay. So you hear it? Yeah. I, I see. Yeah. He can. He's just a little bit confused. He might have misquoted the scripture. 
Uh, well, he was saying he was saying when we when we we're talking about Acts two thirty eight, repent and be baptized. You know, right. Doctor Carter was saying, well, he, he's talking to the Israeli people. He's not talking to Gentiles. And I'm saying, right. well, what difference does it make? It, exactly. Same gospel. Yeah. Same gospel. That's right. Everybody got to be baptized for the remission of their sins. They're gonna get there. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm All sure. right. Yeah. Thanks for your call. You on the word from the Lord? You're on the word from the Lord. You're on the air. Welcome to the program. Going once, going twice. All right. You on the word from the Lord? Yes, sir. I'm the one called while you go, Brother James. Hey, Jay. I also know what that scripture is, Matthew. She looked in her gospel and she said it ain't in the Bible. Uh, Ma- doing to others Ma- you would have given doing to you. What chapter was that? Ma- Matthew 7, 12. Oh, Matthew 12, but Matthew 7, verse 12. Matthew 7, verse 12. Look, and it said she couldn't find it, but it's well, in there. It's in there. Is it in the King James Version, or is it in the other version? King James Version. I'm going to put it up here. One, I'm going to put it up here again for you, Jay. Okay, there it is, right there. It's in front of your monitor right there Right now. here. Here it is. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this okay, is the law and the prophets. This is the law and the prophets. Okay, I see what you're saying. There now. it is. Thank you and God all, bless you. All right, you're welcome. All right. So uh, uh, we try to we try to people want to want to know where from the Lord. So where where is it? Well, Matthew seven twelve. So, but anyway, but there you go. So that's where we're that's where we're coming from. So friends, this is what I'm telling you. If you want to say that there's two different gospels, you're trying to get around something, and it comes down to what you must do to be saved. That's just the bottom line. In Acts 2, 38, Acts 2, verse 38, Peter said unto them, Jews, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is what he told them to do to be saved. Acts 2, 21, all that call on the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. And this is what he told them to do. Now, the question is, will you do the same thing? Now, I know a lot of people don't want to do what Peter said do, because they think it's a different gospel. But look at this. Whoso shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then down here they said, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized. Same gospel that Paul preached. Same gospel that Paul preached is what Peter preached. You're on the word of the Lord. Yeah, how you doing, James? I'm doing good. Yeah, I believe you, you left out Ephesians 4. I believe it also says one, doesn't it? One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. How in the world could anybody see any difference? Well, they say it's a transitional book, and by the time Paul gets over here to write in Ephesians, the, the gospel for the Gentiles was the only one there was. Right. Now, see how ridiculous it is? I, I know what you're saying. I mean, if you're, a Jew, if you're a Jew on the day of Pentecost and you've got to do something to be saved, right. wouldn't it still be the same if you're a Jew today? That's true. So uh, they're, just trying, they're trying to get around it. Well, these people have got different different opinions about this and that. It'd be just like on the day of judgment, you know, God being the judge, say, well, all you rich folks, you all get over here in one corner, and all you poor people, you get over here in another corner. So that don't make a bit of sense. Right. That's just an illustration there. That's, that's right. All right, thank you. All right, thanks for call. All right, well, friends, we're going to wrap up. We're running out of time, but, I, you know, just keep this in mind. Anytime you hear guys like old uh, Les Feldick tell you that there's more than one gospel, just know that he's trying to he's trying to snooker you. He's trying he's trying to trick you, deceive you into believing that you don't have to be baptized to be saved. I can tell you, friends, Peter and Paul preach the same thing, and on the day of judgment, I'm gonna be standing between them both and say, Peter, I did what you said, and Paul, I did what you said, and they're not gonna say, Well, you couldn't have done both. You know, they're gonna say, You're right, there's one gospel, and that's what you have to obey. And that one gospel will put you in the church of Christ that you read about in this book. Friends, we're wrapping up. We're going to uh, remind you again how to, uh, how to assemble with us. If you're uh, in Eden, 2 Peter the Boulevard, uh, 27288. Or give me a call on my cell, 276-340-2653. Or you can write me at, at a word from the Lord at gmail.com. Until next time, thanks for watching, and make sure that you are always getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night. I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry.
talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday.